I want to show you uh, really quickly, and it only takes a, uh, less than a minute to make the perfect pie crust, which is a very essential thing. I think people should know how to make pie crust, babe, I don't you? I think they should. And you too. They shouldn't get to my age and not know how. So two and a half cups of all-purpose unbleached flour, like a Hecker's or a King Arthur, one teaspoon of salt, and I do always put a teaspoon of sugar in mine. Can we have some sugar, uh, Wes? And, um, and I just turn on the... And I just mix the salt in with the flour. I always put a little bit of sugar in. I, I okay, don't know why. I think and then got sugar coming up. He's, he's going to bring it out. One cup of butter, which is two sticks of unsalted, ice-cold butter. And I have a rule, Betty. Uh, you make it cold, you the, the pastry, and you bake it really hot. Those are oh. two golden rules. Uh, here's some sugar. I'll just put in um, a teaspoon of sugar. So, so the butter, that's is, I feel it, feel it. It's really cold. Oh, yeah. See? No. <laughs> the butter should be cold. The water should be cold. The flour should be cold. Uh, and you just what a good sink. run it like this. And if you were timing the actual work here without the talk, but we're multitasking because I'm talking to a fabulous guest at the same time. You, you. There. And just, just process it until it's sort of like a coarse oatmeal. Just like that, see? Uh -huh. Not not overly processed. You want still flecks of that golden butter in it. Got it. And then we have a um, half a cup of iced water. And if you can, you hold that for sure, me. Sure, I just can do that. that. Watch this. Yeah. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of water, and it just depends. It depends on the day, really, on the humidity of the day. It might take a quarter of a cup. It might take a half a cup. How do, and you I, tell, how do you tell that? Well, I'm looking at it, and I can see when it starts to uh, get into, not a ball. You don't want a ball for this. See, I've only used a quarter of a cup, and it's looking almost right. I'll just do a little bit more. So see it's see how it's thing. now going around the outside? Yeah, yeah. it's so a I, sight thing. Really. It is. Mm -hmm. For me, it's a sight thing. And so this, and then take a handful of it and squeeze it like that, and it's nicely together. That's it. So that took about 30 seconds, mm -hmm. even though Joey over here would tell me it took how many minutes, Joey? Three? Uh, a minute and a half. A minute and a half. <laughs> he knows. He has the time in his brain. So now we want to uh, turn this out onto a plastic wrap. Mm -hmm. And um, again, can we're going to use... Can I hold use, anything? Uh, yeah, you can just hold the paper there sure. like that and pull it, pull it up this way. Okay. So I'm going to put in about, oh, two-thirds in one pile because that's going to be the bottom of the crust and one-third on another piece of paper. We're going to make discs. You know, a lot of recipes say, oh, make a ball of pastry and chill it. So then you have this big ball of pastry. Then you have to wait for it to get a little bit unchilled. So you chilled it inside in out. In discs, in discs. Yeah, just a disc. So because it's better it's, to take that thing out of it, though, before you break yeah, it. Right? Yeah, don't, don't leave this in. No, uh, no. I think it's a better, better idea. See, I have an instinct. Yes, you no. do. <laughs> you have the right instincts. Here, now you can gather this up mm -hmm. into a disc, just like this. Pull it around, uh -huh. yeah, pull it around, and, and yeah, okay. form it into a disc. And then we're going to chill this for at least a half an hour until it gets quite cold. And, uh, is yeah. there such a thing as overhandling it? No, yeah, you can definitely yeah. overhandle yeah. it. Okay. But see, what I want you to do is make a flat oh, make disc. That, like yeah, that. get all those little crumbs oh, got it. Uh, incorporated into your disc first. And I'm just doing it this way so that I don't get my hands all dirty to get <laughs> on to the next Will step. Will I show my housekeeper yes. what I can do? <laughs> exactly. So there you have a beautiful disc of pastry. And so now you can wrap it up completely, get all, yeah, completely enclose it. And you want it a flat round. Yeah, that's good. And so we're going to chill yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, uh no, no, no. no. <laughs> Not that flat. Okay, and then we're going to roll. Now, Betty, uh, you have a round here. Why don't you cut the leaves? These are going to be the decorative leaves. Just cut it like this. Okay. And, uh, and then push them out onto the parchment. Got it. Just make right. a lot of leaves. Lot and of the leaves. excess can go right here. Okay. And I'm just going to roll out the bottom crust. Now, the writing in your programs, all of your shows, has been oh, phenomenal. They are just the... Well, we get the credit, Martha, Honest Engine, and it's all what's on that paper. You can't save a bad show. You can screw up a good show, but you can't save a bad show. Yeah. Mark Cherry came to us strictly He's... straight from UCLA, who is now this big, oh. huge producer. And I'm so thrilled for Mark because it's funny, uh, most people, when they get to that degree of success, it's, oh, yes, the show's doing very well, and they're very blasé. 
we went when they, the first DVD of Golden Girls came out. Mark was there because of being a writer. And he said, Betty, do you believe what's happening with the show? Isn't it wonderful? And he was jumping up and down, and I loved him for that enthusiasm. Uh, he's still a very a fabulous writer. Now, just so you, you press your whole bottom crust in here, use a little bit of egg wash, which is one egg and some cream around the edge, and apply around this whole edge your beautiful leaves cut by Betty White. I don't know whether I've all done around here. Oh, you've done a lot, like this, all the way around the edge. Then you line this with a little parchment paper, wait, freeze it for 20 minutes, and then you bake it really hot. This is the filling, and uh, Betty just loves this recipe, oh. and you're going to love what it tastes like. Three eggs, one and a half cups of evaporated milk right out of the can. It's that rich milk, you know, that's uh, Ooh, tasty. Know. One and a half cups of solid pack pumpkin, or if you roast your own pumpkin, just make sure you're using one and a half cups of pureed pumpkin. Uh, three quarters of a cup of light brown sugar, uh, three quarters of a teaspoon of uh, powdered ginger. I love ginger. Three quarters of a teaspoon of cinnamon. So this is all for a nine inch pie. If you wanna make a bigger pie, you can uh, do this uh, one and a half times or two times. Uh, an eighth of a teaspoon of freshly grated nutmeg. One tablespoon of cornstarch, just to keep the pumpkin a little bit um, thicker. And a half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of good vanilla. So all that gets mixed up together. And where do you get the person who puts all those little dishes together? Well. <laughs> That you have to look really hard for. Yes. So all this gets poured right in. Oh, this is what the crust looks like after it is pre-baked for about 20 minutes. So it's a little golden on the edges. It's already started to cook. So um, this now goes right in. You have your oven preheated at 350 degrees and you bake this for 50 to 60 minutes. And it turns out to look, Betty, like this. Sorry. Isn't that beautiful? We baked um, extra little leaves so that oh, they can go that? around on the top. And always, that it's that glazing with the egg and cream that makes these leaves so beautiful. Would you like a piece? Oh, they are so pretty. Would you like a taste? A uh, chore. Sure. Okay. 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 And whipped cream, absolutely important. The weather turns cooler and the leaves begin to change color. I know it's time to start making desserts featuring all my fall favorites apples, quince, and of course, pumpkin, universally famous nowadays. Today I'm combining nutmeg, ginger, and allspice to season an irresistible pumpkin mousse. So into a bowl, break four eggs, separating the yolks into the bowl and the whites into your bowl of your mixer. And the machine should be fitted with the wire whisk. I actually can't imagine baking cooking without my KitchenAid mixer. And it now has more than 15 great attachments uh, that you can make everything from pasta to ice cream to sausage to salsa and so much more. As the egg whites are beating with the whisk, sprinkle on one quarter cup of granulated sugar. In a pot on the stove, a quarter of a cup of cold water and I've sprinkled my gelatin one package right on top of the water and just stir it over heat quickly until it liquefies and you pour that right over your yolks. Stir it in, break those egg yolks up, two tablespoons of dark rum and a half a teaspoon of best vanilla, half a teaspoon of allspice, the same thing with powdered ginger, a pinch of white pepper, a grating a fresh nutmeg, and a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, a half a cup plus two tablespoons of pumpkin puree. This can be right out of the can or homemade. Stir this all up. And this is a quarter cup plus two tablespoons of maple syrup. And make sure you get real maple syrup. So there, that's your base for the mousse. And get this nice and fluffy. That looks good, fluffy, but not dry. So I'll fold in a little bit to start there. This looks nice and fluffy. And once the egg whites are folded in, then you fold in your whipped cream. Mm, it does smell very autumnal. Now this can be spooned right away into pretty goblets. 
I like to use all different size goblets. That way, if someone says, oh, just a little, you can give them a little. These will get chilled for at least two hours overnight or up to a day. Now beat up one cup of heavy cream for a dollop on each dessert. And you can put as much or as little as you like. I think it makes a spectacular addition to a dessert table or to a dinner. Enjoy. First you'll need a springform pan like this. This is nine inch. Fit this into the spring form. So tighten your spring form. Cut a round of parchment that fits exactly in the bottom. So now your pan is ready for the graham cracker crust that fits right down in the bottom. This is very simple to make and I'm sure you've all made such things before. One cup very finely ground graham crackers with two tablespoons of sugar. Mix that together and two tablespoons of melted butter. Always seems that how can this hold together? But it does. Stir this together. Graham crackers are a very dry, tasty cracker. You could use chocolate wafers or even vanilla wafers for the crust, but I like the taste of graham with pumpkin. And we'll just pour the whole mixture into the bottom. Spread it out into as even a layer as possible and then compress it. I find it very easy to do this quickly and efficiently with the bottom of a glass. Now this gets pre-baked in a 350 preheated oven. Just bake it until it's set 10 minutes or so. So now for the filling. This is a cream cheese filling and we're using two pounds, yes, two pounds of best quality cream cheese. So this is nice and smooth. Add one and a half cups plus two tablespoons of granulated sugar. This is a large amount of filling to fit that nine inch graham cracker crust lined cake pan. Break into a bowl four eggs. You can add them one at a time to your filling. That's one. These cakes are so fun to make and easy, and they are also very, very popular. And there goes the fourth egg. And don't forget one teaspoon of best quality vanilla. And a pinch of salt. So scrape down your bowl. That's the filling. How simple is that? You could make a cheesecake just with this filling, but for a spectacular presentation, it's kind of fun to add some pumpkin to a portion of this filling and swirl it in. Add a quarter of the filling into one cup of pureed pumpkin. Add some cinnamon, a half a teaspoon, and some freshly grated nutmeg, about a quarter of a teaspoon, which is about a third of a nutmeg. So incorporate the spices thoroughly into the batter. And now pour your cheesecake into the pre-baked, and this is what it looks like, pre-baked, a little bit golden brown around the edges, and place the cheesecake pan, the springform pan, on a square of aluminum foil. And I like to put this around just to prevent any, any chance of the water in which this cheesecake is baked from leaking into the pan. Mm. Get every bit of goodness into that pan. So here we have the base into which we will now put dollops of pumpkin. You can dot this over the top and just use up all the pumpkin mixture and then with the skewer, swirl into the base, just like this. And it does get that pumpkin all the way down through the cake. Very nice. Put this in a roasting pan like this with high sides. Transfer to a 325 degree oven. Once it's on the oven shelf, 
Then pour in your boiling water. This is creating a bain-marie effect in a roasting pan. Bake that at 325 degrees until it's slightly wobbly in the center of the cheesecake. That'll take about 75 minutes. So let the cheesecake cool completely, refrigerate uncovered for at least 24 hours. Run a knife all the way around the perimeter. Release the spring form ring. And there you have a really beautiful cheesecake. Slide it onto your serving platter or pedestal. And there you have a spectacular cheesecake for any occasion. Gluten-free spiced pumpkin pie with a crisp rice crust. It all began with the creative use of a crunchy rice cereal combined with a mixture of butter, brown sugar, and almonds. And that crust is just pressed into a uh, pie plate and it looks just like a crumb crust. So it's very easy to make three cups of gluten-free rice cereal. And it says it right on the box, gluten-free. A quarter of a cup plus a tablespoon of light brown sugar. Half a cup of almonds. They can be raw almonds that are sliced or whole. Either will work. And a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And butter, five tablespoons of butter, which I'll add, I'm gonna grind this up a little bit first. Just to... When you're grinding almonds or any kind of nuts, make sure that your blade of your food processor is sharp. And now add your butter, five tablespoons of melted butter. So that looks good. And now this can be just dumped right into, I like using glass because I can see if the bottom of the crust is well made, well baked, I should say. And this is a nine inch glass pie plate. And spread this into an even layer, a little thicker on the outside than in the center. And you can use the back of your hand, your fingers, if you'd like. That's how we always used to do it until we found out that pressing with a little metal cup measure works very well and quickly. This can just press your crust into a nice even layer. Look how nice, this works so well. And preheat your oven to 375 degrees. Try to make the sides all equal thickness and just pop this into your oven and make the filling. It takes about 12 minutes. And now for the pumpkin filling, the spicy pumpkin filling, one and a half cups of pumpkin puree. This can be homemade. Of course, it can also be canned. Pumpkin is one of the nicest foods that you can get out of a can three eggs, and whisk the eggs into the pumpkin. It's a custardy filling, very similar to a traditional pumpkin pie. You can also use any number of squashes for this pie too. Instead of pumpkin, you could use um, the wonderful butternut squash, acorn squash, kabocha squash. Uh, they all make very nice pie fillings. And three quarters of a cup of light brown sugar, a half a teaspoon of salt, some cornstarch, about a tablespoon will do, just in case your squash is a little wet. A pinch of cloves and some cinnamon, one teaspoon. Also my favorite nutmeg, just about a quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg. So stir this up. Brown sugar gets lumpy and dry really fast, which is why we keep it in a sealed container. And it'll be very hard to break up if it gets too dry. So you can just add this right to your pumpkin. And now add one cup of milk, whole milk. 
Some people might use cream, but the milk works very nicely. Make sure that your oven is set to 325 degrees. But you can see it's nice and silky smooth. Get this right into your pie crust. This rice crust, which is gluten-free, can be used with a filling of uh, cream, of chiffon or custard. Chocolate is very good. You can experiment, but it's a very nice crust to have on hand when you want to make a delicious pie. There, get that right into your oven. It's going to take about 50 to 55 minutes. So for the topping for this delicious pumpkin pie, we're not done. Yogurt, three cups of yogurt, a half a teaspoon of vanilla, and three tablespoons of honey. And this you just dollop right on top. Use a nice thick yogurt, like a Greek style. So just spoon this right on top. You want to just cover the whole pie with your yogurt. Looks so beautiful. And you can just put this back into the fridge to chill a little bit until you're ready to serve. You can experiment with all sorts of fillings for this unique crust, but this one just might turn out to be your favorite. Enjoy. For a really delicious, delicately spiced pumpkin bread that I think you will enjoy very much, it's the perfect example of what's known as quick breads. No fuzzy yeast, no kneading required, and it's delicious straight out of the oven, but it's even better the next day after the flavors of the spices have had a chance to develop. So three and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, and one of my favorite spices, allspice, quarter of a teaspoon, three teaspoons of baking powder, Make sure your baking powder is fresh. And now a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Half a teaspoon of freshly grated nutmeg. And it's about half of a nutmeg. There. So I'm whisking with a wire whisk. And these are our dry ingredients ready to incorporate into our wet ingredients, which I'll make right now. So one can, this is a 15 ounce can of pumpkin. Now we've been using this in all our pumpkin recipes. And by the way, here's a surprising fact about canned pumpkin puree. Most manufacturers make it from one or more kinds of squash, which can be less stringy and richer in sweetness and color than most pumpkins. And one cup of dark brown sugar. Cream the brown sugar and the pumpkin and one cup of granulated sugar also four large eggs. And we've changed the typical quick bread recipe uh, to make it, I think, even more palatable and delicious by substituting melted butter, 12 tablespoons of melted butter, for an equal amount of vegetable uh, oil or shortening. I really prefer the taste of butter, and I'd rather use a good creamery butter than oil in my bread. So just let this get nicely incorporated. And now you can add your butter. And then you can start spooning in your dry ingredients, alternating with a half a cup of buttermilk. It smells really, really delicious. And a little bit more of the dry ingredients. So these are, these cake pans are buttered six by three. They're really little miniature bread pans. And you can also make two larger loaves, eight and a half by four and a half. But these little ones are perfect for gifting. And the easiest way I find to make sure that each pan gets an equal amount is to spoon equal amounts one by one into each pan. You can also do as the professionals do and weigh the pans. And it's very handy to have 
a good scale in your kitchen and work with it that way. I think it's a very good idea. Then you'll get even sized loaves and most professional bakers do use scales. Because it's hard to divide into four equal <laughs> portions. Yes, this has a very rich orangey color. So transfer this to a 350 degree oven, 40 to 45 minutes. So this quick bread really does slice very nicely. Hmm, it's really, really good. So delicious that you'll be craving it all year long. So in a bowl, there are two cups of bread flour. To that, add three cups of all-purpose whole wheat flour, half a cup of oats, and we're using rapid rise yeast, also known as instant dry yeast. So you can see it's very fine. It doesn't need to be dissolved in water like the regular active dry yeast. So just sprinkle that right into your mix and two tablespoons of sesame seeds, seeds of the sesame plant native to Africa and India, two tablespoons of flax seeds, two tablespoons of poppy seeds, and four tablespoons of husked or shelled pumpkin seeds. So all of these can be stirred together. Oh, and don't forget the salt. Very important for this to have salt. Two tablespoons of coarse salt. I like to use kosher salt. And now dissolve a quarter of a cup of granulated sugar in two and a half cups of cold water. And pour that right into the dry ingredients and stir well. This is like one of the easiest recipes and it's also very nice to serve at a dinner party. And the same bowl is going to be used for letting the bread rise. Very good. Now brush the top of the dough with a little bit of olive oil and cover with plastic wrap. And let it rise at room temperature until doubled in bulk. That's gonna take from 12 to 18 hours. We have one that's already risen. See how the plastic is full of gas? Just pull that off. And that's the gas that comes from the yeast. Scrape this down. Mm, so fragrant. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of flour on my surface here, and I'm really resisting the urge to knead. You don't have to knead this bread. That's the beauty of it. So use your bench scraper and just form this into a ball. Very nice. So pretty. Now here's your Dutch oven. Brush the bottom and the sides with olive oil. A Dutch oven simulates a baker's oven in that it creates the steam necessary to achieve that nice crispy crust. There, that's, that's good. And a little bit of flour in the bottom. And get your dough right there. And then sprinkle the top of your dough with a little bit of flour. The flour helps the bread get a wonderful dark crust. But now one more step. One large egg white that's going to help all these other seeds adhere to the crust and just brush the top of the bread with the egg wash. And now sprinkle a tablespoon of flax seeds over the surface. Shiny and beautiful and nutritious. And a tablespoon of pumpkin seeds. The same seeds that you put into the dough are now being sprinkled over the top poppy seeds. Black poppy seeds really darken the top of this loaf. And a tablespoon of sesame seeds. Now you can use white sesame seeds or you could use black sesame seeds, which would give an even darker appearance to our beautiful bread. And now into the top of this beautiful bread, we're going to score an X. Scoring is not just to make a visually pretty design on the top of the loaf, it's also how the baker controls the direction in which the loaf expands. There, that should do it. Very beautiful. So now cover your loaf and let this bread rise until it has expanded, doubled in bulk. Now this has been rising for almost two hours and just sprinkle 
a little bit of water on the top. This will help create an even crispier crust. Cover and get right into a 475 degree preheated oven. Reduce the heat to 450 degrees, bake for about 45 minutes, uncover, and bake 15 minutes longer until it has a beautiful dark brown surface. Look how gorgeous. Cool it in the pot, slice it in half first. Look at the nice texture inside. And then just slice it this way. Mm, look how beautiful. I can't wait, I have to try it. Some nice unsalted butter and some homemade apricot jam. That's a whole California apricot. And mm, healthy, very tasty, and homemade. Isn't it amazing that baking bread in a pot could yield such incredible results? So this is a really, uh, a one bowl kind mm -hmm. of, well, actually a two bowl cake. You could do it all in one bowl if you wanted to. But you know, they're, they're bowls. Yeah. So, so, so you wash one more bowl, right. what's the big deal? So we mix up the, uh, the dry ingredients mm -hmm. first, two and a half cups of flour. And you know, you don't have to sift anymore. You know, I was wondering about that. Yeah, because if you use a wire whisk like this, mm -hmm. it really sifted. does aerate and knock out all the, the lumps. Mm -hmm. And uh, one tablespoon of pumpkin pie spice. I love the smell of pumpkin I, pie spice. But you can buy pumpkin pie spice, which I have never done in my entire existence. Mm -hmm. But uh, What if goes you, into pumpkin pie spice? But uh, well, all of these things, oh. cinnamon, ground uh -huh. cinnamon, uh -huh. ground nutmeg, right. allspice, right. cloves, and ginger. Uh -huh. So, But it does come packaged now as pumpkin pie spice. For you lazy slackers out there, <laughs> how dare you buy it? Two teaspoons of baking soda. <laughs> and a half a teaspoon of salt. Mm -hmm. So again, all the dry ingredients and one and a half cups of sugar. So there, that looks like it's gone through a sifter, right? That really does. Great. Like now the wet ingredients. Okay. So two eggs. Two eggs. You can just in dump here? them in here, there. Right. And the pumpkin. Okay. And it's um, one and a half, uh, uh, sure excuse me, one out. can of solid packed pumpkin or the equivalent in homemade mm -hmm. roasted pumpkin. And so you can, you can mix these together and the butter too. Ah, and we have better with butter. Yep, and that is one half cup of butter, which is one stick of butter. Mm -hmm. And there, so that's all mixed together. And it's a nice color. Yeah, and then if, while you whisk, I'll just pour the dry in. Let's go down a little. Okay. <laughs> Over-enthusiastic baker. That's me. Is it, 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 can you harm the cake if you're beating it too fast? Yeah, you can overbeat, but uh -huh. but you're not doing. You're not overbeating. Beat it. Okay, so that might be hard. So now shake. Uh oh, you can get your tie all covered with flour. Here now, just shake that off, and then we'll finish it off with a rubber scraper. There. And so it's a it's kind of a dry batter. So uh -huh. that's the buttered pan. And this is a really delicious, delicious pie. Excuse me. This is a delicious cake. Um, Wes and Angie. Wes and have, Angie! They have little cupcakes for all of you. Ooh. So this gets in here. It's very simple. Yeah. It's a very simple recipe. And you bake it in a 350 degree oven for about 40 minutes. And you can make them into little cupcakes, which you could give on Halloween night. That would be very nice. Wouldn't that be nice? And uh, the kids would love having that as they come to the door. And of course, don't forget the other treats because they always get disappointed. Yeah, they want. They, they still want the candy they bar. Do. Here's they, my problem. You know when you get those little like Three Musketeers bars yeah. that say fun size? Right. To me, that's not fun. <laughs> I want one that's about three or four size, times the size of the well, normal one. Well. That would be fun. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Come on. So, so what do you give out at the door? Now, I, you know what, I, I'm a big fan. I like the Twix bar. I like the Three Musketeers, the, the Nestle's uh, Crunch bar. That's very, that's very yeah, popular. Yeah, those are good. We like those. So that goes into the 350 oven. Oh. And when it comes out, this is what Ooh. you have. It's a perfect, perfect cake. And uh, to cut it into equal squares, I always cut it in half first. Mm -hmm. And then in half again. You ah. do that too, right? Well, see, in my house, you, normally it's just you cut a it in quarters shot. and that's it. You're done. I don't believe you. Well, see, you've never had my I family do come over. I not believe you. So this gets, oh, that's this perfect. is very nice. So you get, you know, 16 nice squares. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, the frosting is delicious. And you can just serve it with the frosting on top like this, and that's, it's honey. Ooh. And cream cheese, and uh, taste that's that. That's perfect, wow. I think you'll like that. Mmm. That's So fabulous. how do you, how does the audience like those little cupcakes? That's tasty. Tasty, huh? You know what would be good to eat these? You know what? It would be perfect to eat this cake. What? Saturday night at 7 o'clock when I'm hosting the Quill Awards on NBC. Oh, thank you for mentioning that. <laughs> no, I just that. thought I'd throw that. Oh, no, it's thank a, you. It's the very first reader, People's Choice Awards for readers. Mm -hmm. And they pick the books. They vote on them. And it's a perfect dessert to be eating. And, and, and you know what? Next well, year, I, I am sure Martha's Rules will be one of the nominees for the business Oh, book. well, I hope so. Thank you. Every space station needs a couple of pumpkins at Halloween. And all you need are a few supplies from your local hardware store. Now, Tom, I yes. think that Funkins really work very well for this. Right. They're safe. Mm -hmm. They're, they don't get soggy. They no. don't collapse. And you've gone through all the trouble of doing this, and you'll have it again next year. Yeah, definitely. And all the ingredients are so much fun. You're using, I have those in my hallway at you night. Those little accent the, night the, lights? Definitely. And these are little Christmas tree lights. And these are, what's, oh, that's, that's, a, another that's also a hole. And what's that one? That's like that under is, the counter? Yeah, that's like an under counter utility light. Yeah. <laughs> I really like these. And, and we all also, the different shape yeah. and size light bulbs are very cute. And what's too. great is that these are a candelabra base. So they'll fit right into the Christmas tree these. lights. Yeah. Yeah. So great. you know, you can substitute in and, and that's part of the fun. You're, and these you're designing a light. Those are great little night lights. Night lights. Oh, these are very cute. So these yeah. are just like flat lights. This guy has a great Oh yeah, yeah, he has a very nice one. Well, show us how you're making now. You can use real pumpkins and you can use funkins. Right. But I prefer the funkin just because it's reusable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're great. They're lightweight. Yep. And this is a great tool. You could use, though, our pumpkin carving kit and use the little hole maker. Now, in the funkin, what did you use to cut? The same drill? Yep. Oh. I used all the same tools. That's what's so wonderful about them. So how big is it? Oh, 13 sixteenths. I'm just getting a step ahead of you here, and I'm threading in my Christmas lights. One by one. So I've removed all the bulbs from this right. cord, and I'm just going to insert one by one. And to keep these in place, you have to insert your bulbs, right? Yep, right away. Because it'll fall back in and you'll be chasing them. Right, the now the time. next one. And it's also very important for the lights that you won't be using to just loosen them up so they don't light. Don't remove them, just loosen them. And that'll keep the pumpkin from getting overheated because these are very hot lights. This is very fun. So I'm doing three eyes and three eyes. Okay. And now on this one, I've stuck the end that has the outlet through the mouth and I'm just gonna plug in one of these little night lights. Uh, oh, I think I forgot to use this big one for the mouth. Very charming. And maybe, well, I think Can instead of this one, I was gonna put a clear one in, thank you. Yeah. Very nice. Chandelier bulb here. And then the rest of these are loosened so that they don't light when they're plugged in. There. And the rest of these just get stuffed in. You could also put them in a plastic bag to keep them clean. <laughs> Very charming. And look how easy it is. It really is quick. This is a Robotron pumpkin. Put one in your window or on your front walk. You'll transport your trick-or-treaters back to the future for Halloween. We have so many different ideas for carving pumpkins, and Bet wanted to learn every single one of them, right? Yeah, right, right, absolutely. How about making one of those snakes? Oh, it's brilliant. Isn't that brilliant. cute? Uh, just brilliant. I yeah. love it. And that's love very it. easy to do because the tools are just um, a, a spade drill on your electric drill. Are or you nuts? Your cordless drill. Oh, yeah. Are you crazy? <laughs> oh, my God, I've never even held one, much less 
done something with it. Oh, my God. Well, Martin can do it for well, you. Well, yes, and I'll stand over him saying, now, darling, okay. I, I can imagine. So um, when you're starting to carve a pumpkin, you have to take the insides out because you um, really need to uh, get the seeds out. And you pull out the bottom, and I always do it on the bottom. Do you, uh -huh. do you ever do the bottom first or the um, top first? Well, I used to do the top first, but I tell you, I found a book called Play With Your Food. Oh, I like and that book. And my daughter was a little girl, and they uh, use the stem as the nose of the pumpkin. Oh, yeah, that's really cute. Uh, this one is carved, already carved. Yeah. I, just, I just thought these were hilarious. Yeah, and we have a lot of pictures Aren't from the book. these funny? So does uh, so? Oh, tell it. When tell we were when my daughter was little, we did this and we did. We were very we were religious about it. We did it every year. We used to bake the uh, uh, pumpkin seeds with oh, butter, delicious. roast yes. them with butter, and that was fantastic. And salt, and salt ice yes. cream scoop to scoop out the seeds, and then you put the pumpkin over the light, which is really great. And then you you and you can still pick it up by the stem. If they're too big, don't pick them up by the stem because the stem might break off. Oh, okay. And then if you want to make holes like we did for our beautiful snake in a hollowed out pumpkin, use a spade bit like this, a uh, bit like this. Don't worry. This is here, I want you to try. Really, just, who am I talking just, to? Just so you, just try. Come here, come here. That's the little trigger and just hold the pumpkin. And where do I go? Hold the pumpkin I here, here. any okay. place. It's just any old place. Yeah. Now look how easy. Very easy, yes. shocking. See? <laughs> and if you don't have, lovely, just lovely, if you don't have a uh, cordless drill, you can use a pipe that's cut on an angle like that. This is a pipe cutter. See, you can have, wow. well, you probably would Did more. Did you cut the pipe too? Yeah, but you could probably, <laughs> with a hacksaw, a hacksaw goes through copper, copper is very soft. So you just go like this. Look, bet, bet. I'm, I'm Look. fascinated. Here, you Utterly do that. Fascinated. You cut, you cut. My God, you, you cut can leave it. Just leave it. Pipe? It comes out the bottom. Martha, just leave it. Leave it. Just cut. Okay, just cut. Yeah, really? this keeps starting to come out the other end. Wow, yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. You go, unbelievable. And you can go all the way through. Here, you go. can. Yeah. Oh my God, so this, the, is yeah. this is shocking. See? Oh, this. Look, this is fantastic. Oh my God, I found a new thing. This. I have a new hobby. Okay. <laughs> now you can also use a melon scoop. Uh huh. That I've seen. This you can use, and this cuts very nicely in a soft skin pumpkin. Okay. So you can just cut a nice round out like that. But how that. do you know a soft skin from a hard well, skin? Well, you try it. Oh. And if it's hard, it's not going to go through. I see. Okay, I see. here, try that one. And you don't want to go all the way through. You only want to make For a that one. Thing. No, and oh, okay. then, then the transparency will look very nice with the candle inside. Oh. See? Look. Beautiful. Perfect. Perfect. Beautiful. Perfect. Beautiful. Now, if you want to do a boo on your pumpkin, wow. you take the template, and this is on our website at MarthaStewart.com, of course, and you tape it on the pumpkin, and then with a sharp pin or a big needle or one of these uh, tools, you just make an outline like this so that you are actually tracing onto the pumpkin. And then when you take this off, you scoop with this nice little chisel. These are all um, little woodcutter's tools. Amazing. And you just cut like this. It's called gouging. Uh-huh. And you just go along your lines. My God. And you gouge out, and ultimately you will have a beautiful boo on your pumpkin. See? Oh, Try that. because it's Now, don't let it slip, because if you let it slip, you ruin the design. So you just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just warning you. Just warning you. And there's lots of alternative lighting for the inside of the pumpkins. This little fluorescent light is great. It'll last about three hours, so just about a, the right time. <laughs> what? I uh -oh. think I made a boo-boo. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, oops, uh -oh. I, oops, I made a boo-boo. Well, that's why you have to just, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Okay, we thank you. We can make the boo a little bigger. Okay, yeah, thank see? you, Martha. Thank we'll you. We'll just make it a little bigger. Oh, but see, you just, it's you. not so hard, though. See, once you practice. It's staggering. Yeah. I can't, how, I, no, no wonder you're up all night. And I then. Mean, <laughs> the little miner's light. This is great. You know, you wear these on your heads, or um, do you have one of these, right, that you walk around with? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and, uh, and now they have little caps with these on them. They're so great. And, uh, and that will last also about two or three hours with a battery. Now, once you do this kind of gouging, and it makes sort of a translucent look, uh, you then put a little bit of Vaseline on the cut areas. Uh -huh. And this prevents that green, ugly mold from forming mm. and from a lot of little, um, you know, cruddies. It'll keep the pumpkin fresher, so you just do that. Just like on a cut, you know, something like that. And then, this is a great one. This oh, is a porcu porcupiney look, and this is so great. Great, using Christmas lights from the inside, 
Just stick them through holes, and that you can use a little electric drill bit and make holes all through the pumpkin. The crust is a ginger snap ginger crust. Ginger snap crust. And you don't have to make the ginger snaps. No, store-bought ginger okay. snaps that we grind up in the food processor. 25 to be exact. Right. This size. Yes, so you want to get about a cup and a quarter. Okay, so I'll grind it's these gonna up. going to be loud. Ah! <laughs> so, um, Okay, get the idea? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it takes a little bit, and you might get a few clumps, so just sift it out, and right. then you'll wind up with this so very you, nice okay. crust. Yeah, that's yeah. very nice. From there, we add two tablespoons of sugar, a pinch of salt, and then four tablespoons melted butter. So just like you're making a graham cracker crust. Yes, the okay. same or thing. Or a chocolate wafer crust. Exactly, but okay. this has that nice spiciness to yeah. it, which is perfect with the pumpkin filling. Yes. So it just gets mixed together. And this is also a great crust for somebody who might be afraid of pop brise. Or, I know, there's so many know. people who are so afraid of rolling out. And, yeah. you know, we sent, I sent out a tweet today uh, asking people to ask questions about their, their pie challenges for this holiday. And we, so far we've gotten almost 200 wow. questions. And we're going to be answering some of those questions in a little while. But you want me to do this when yes. you make the filling? So that's okay. just press it in. If you okay. want to use the measuring cup to even it Definitely. out, you can do that. Um, and then we'll so start you want it up the, the sides, right? Up the sides. Okay. And even up to the, the edge is great. Okay. Okay, so the filling, so this is an unbaked filling. So unbaked? Oh, so it's refrigerated? Yes. Oh, it's a refri gelatin or? No, nope, oh. it's a stirred custard that we then chill in the refrigerator. Oh, okay. And what about the eggs? The eggs go, we're going to cook it all on the stove. Oh, oh you're cooking yep. it. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's cooked but not baked. Okay. Exactly. All right. Okay, so four egg yolks. Because if you're buying eggs at supermarket eggs and stuff, you have to cook them. Yes. Yes. Four egg yolks, quarter cup of sugar. I like to add the sugar See, first. See, it's so easy if you use this. Yes, that just it really tamps pounds it right it down. down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then quarter cup of cornstarch. This is going to be the thickener. Mix this together. Oh, okay. Together. So that's what that's what's going to thicken it. Yes. Is the cornstarch and the eggs themselves. Exactly. Egg yolks. Okay. So to this, we're going to add our warmed milk. And so we have two cups of milk over here. Do we pre-bake pre this uh, crust how long? Yeah, so this gets chilled for 15 minutes just to set everything together. And then it goes into 350 for 15 minutes. It'll get a little bit golden, darker golden on okay. the bottom. And that's it. That's the total baking for okay. this pie. Hmm. And okay. it's okay with the straight side? Mm -hmm. And you can get it out? It's, it's, the first slice is always a little tricky, but after that, the, the crust holds together pretty well. That's one of the well. questions that I got on Twitter this morning. How do you get out that piece of <laughs> that pie? That first piece is always a little okay. tricky. We're going to answer that question. Okay, so we have Jennifer is going to illustrate it with this pie. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> I'll try. She's not prepared for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for the custard, okay. the milk. So there, this is a beautiful crust. Yeah. yeah. Quarter cup of sugar pinch of salt, and then our wonderful spices. Okay, so I can add the spices. Okay, great. Quarter of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Mm -hmm. Quarter of, and you should use probably clean spoons. You shouldn't mix your spices That's right. True. Quarter of a teaspoon of grated nutmeg. Mm -hmm. And a pinch, just a pinch of ground cloves because cloves are really strong. Very strong. strong. Okay. okay. And a half a teaspoon. Of the of vanilla. vanilla. Mm -hmm. And if you like it really spicy, you can add more. Yes. Pump them and up. a pinch of salt. There we go. Okay. So and now salt. we want to temper this hot milk mixture into the egg yolks. Okay. So we'll just pour in a little bit, if you could whisk, just to get that together. And then we'll go back into the pan. Great. Mm. Okay, temper, bring it up to... A hot temperature so you can add it to the other. Right. Okay. We don't want to scramble those yolks, so we want to warm them up before they go into the pan. Okay. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the spices because um, we are using today spices from Spice Islands, uh, which uh, sources really high-quality spices and herbs from all around the world. Uh, and, uh, and I really trust them because they are strong and fresh and they come in these glass bottles, which is the best barrier to keep your spices fresh. And these spices don't have any added flavorings, no fillers, um, no preservatives. And the vanilla extract, I like this vanilla a lot. Mm -hmm. It has no, I didn't even know they put corn syrup oh, no. in some. This has no corn syrup in it. And uh, Spice Islands has a very nice gift for everyone in the audience. This audience is really lucky. <laughs> 
their premium spices and extracts, along with a recipe for our pumpkin cream pie. Thank you very much, Spike Island. So nice. So nice. Yeah, and uh, and you know, people forget they sometimes keep keep cinnamon for a couple of years. How many of you have cinnamon in a jar or in a can in your cupboard from five years ago? Uh, <laughs> time to refresh, my dear. Uh, time to get rid of that because it really does lose its potency. And, and, and you should use spices. Spices are so good and they're good for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that. Okay, so. Now do we add, strain that? We do. Once when do we add the pumpkin? Well, after after oh. this has come to a boil, okay. it's going to really get thick. Then we'll add the pumpkin and a tablespoon of butter and then we'll strain it. Oh, okay. Okay, here it comes. It happens pretty quickly. Okay. See it coming now together? Now add the pumpkin? Yeah. I'll turn off the heat. Add the okay. pumpkin. A quarter, uh, one and a quarter cups of canned pumpkin. Okay, so pan canned is fine. Canned if is you fine. Have, if you have um, deconstructed your own uh, pumpkin, which I do, I mm -hmm. try to make my own pumpkin puree, you can yep. use that You can too. use that. Just don't okay. use the pie filling. And one tablespoon of butter. Correct. Okay. Okay. Just so don't use pumpkin pie filling. That's right. Right. Just, you just want it to be pure pumpkin. Yes. Okay, so there it is. That's the filling. And so, as you can see, this pie, you can make this whole pie in 30 minutes. I'll take that. Okay, great. Oops. Now, this goes through the strainer. So you're straining out what? Well, you're just really smoothing it out. There's okay. probably nothing in there. Maybe there's a bit of egg or something, but... Um, I'll push. Okay, you push I it love through. doing this. This is so much fun. <laughs> You want a strainer that's not too fine because, as you can see, it's it's quite thick. So and this one has be, turn on the television, watch Martha Stewart living, or <laughs> or watch something because this takes a while. At our house up in Maine, whoopie pies are very popular. Three cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of coarse salt, two tablespoons of cinnamon, a tablespoon of cloves. All the flavors that go into a good pumpkin pie filling, and one tablespoon of powdered ginger. Also add a teaspoon of baking powder and a teaspoon of baking soda. These will help the whoopie pies get nice and fluffy. So this is the dry ingredients, which will be added to the pumpkin filling. Now, the pumpkin, three cups of pumpkin puree. You can make your own pumpkin puree if you care to, but you can also use canned pumpkin. One teaspoon of vanilla, a cup of vegetable oil, and we're using unflavored vegetable oil, like a safflower oil will do. Two cups of dark brown sugar, packed, and two eggs. So all of these ingredients go into this bowl. Use your whisk and stir all of this together. Looks like a lot. It is a lot. Makes 12 finished whoopie pies. Smells so good. It gets you in the mood for the autumn. And now add your dry ingredients. You can sprinkle the dry ingredients a little at a time. Put this over here and whisk this in. It's a nice batter because you don't have to get out the mixer. You can make lots and lots of these. It's great to have them for a party. I remember going to a party last summer and they had maybe four or five different flavors of whoopie pies. That was the dessert and people went nuts. The batter gets heavier and heavier. So at one point you'll find that the whisk is not going to do it, and you can use your big scraper to finely incorporate everything together. And I find it's best to scoop these cookies onto parchment-lined baking sheets with an ice cream scoop so that you have all identically sized cookies. If they're all different shapes, they won't fit together nicely and they won't look like whoopie pies. So each sheet uh, will take about eight cookies but make this level scoop. So make sure your oven is preheated to 350 degrees.
bake until the cookies just start to crack on top and a toothpick inserted into the center comes out clean. That'll take about 15 minutes. Let cool completely in the pan on a wire rack. So for the cream cheese frosting, it's the same recipe we all love and adore. One stick of butter, eight ounces of cream cheese. Let that get nicely creamed. Three cups of sifted confectioner's sugar. Get all those lumps out of that confectioner's sugar. And one teaspoon of the best vanilla. Let's make sure that's really mixed with the butter. And what I like about the cream cheese frosting is that it's not only tasty, but it's so easy to use. And it will take three cups of confectioner's sugar. And so that is your beautiful creamy cream cheese frosting. Mmm, so great. Now this can be made up to a day in advance. Just keep it in a bowl in the fridge, well covered, and then pipe it between your pumpkin whoopie pie halves. And I'll show you how easy that is. We have a bag already filled. This is what the whoopie pies look like when they're cooled. See a little bit of cracking on the top? Nicely flat on the bottom, all a uniform size. So pipe a large dollop of frosting on half of each whoopie pie, then top with the other half. So neat, so uniform, so utterly delicious. Make sure you chill these whoopie pies for 30 minutes before you serve them. Aren't those cute? These are so easy, so delicious. I guarantee you'll be making them again and again for your family and your friends. This is your mom's recipe. This is, well, my mother, she makes um, a pumpkin pecan pie um, every Thanksgiving, and it's my favorite thing, that and the mashed potatoes. Yes. Um, but she has, um, there's, she has a little issue with getting a good slice out of the pie dish. Oh. And so what I've done here is I've transferred it into a tart pan. Oh. And, and does she do it this way now? No, she, well, this is the first time, oh. so ho hopefully she'll do this this Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, but you get a nice clean slice because you're, you're able to take it right yeah, out of the, exactly. the tart pan. So good. And, um, and we're going to make our pastry first. Yes. In this new fabulous food processor. Food processor, the KitchenAid food processor. It's fantastic. Um, Look how big the bowl is. It's, that's the best part. Yeah. It's a 13 cup um, capacity, and so it's perfect for making pie dough. Yes. Um, it's, and we're going to start right here. We have two and a half cups of flour. This is the basic paprizé recipe. Are you using my perfect pie crust? Yes, of course. I wouldn't think of using anything else. Um, and then we have the teaspoon of salt. And for a little sweetness, we add the teaspoon of sugar. It, you're putting it on top of, the, <laughs> of this part. I'm going to let, let right. you do that. Okay. Okay, and, and then a teaspoon of sugar. And a teaspoon. I put okay. the teaspoon of sugar in, and then we're gonna put this lid on here. And what's really great about this machine, if you could see this red line here, it um, really creates a quality seal, and none of the flour comes up when you when you pulse on. And so we're just gonna sit yeah. that together, and then we can add our cubed butter, which okay. we have here. So you can just put oh, it yeah, down you here. could do that. So I'll I, let you I'm, do this. Okay, I love this machine. It has an extra wide mouth, which is great yeah. for things like that or cutting. Um, or cutting lemons, tomatoes, anything. This machine's really great. It has icy cold butter. Is very important. When you're important. making pastry, make it icy cold. Right. Everything should be cold. Um, and if you were using the regular blade here, but if you were making something like bread dough or pizza dough, they have a fantastic um, dough blade here as well. And so we're just gonna pulse this together until it creates coarse good? crumbs. I'd go a little bit further. And then we're going to add the water, and we're going to start and, and with... And for its size, this machine is light. Yes. I was surprised about how light it was. I think a little, oh, a little bit more. Okay. Just like this. Yes. There we go. There. Okay. Okay. And then we have a quarter That looks cup. good, right? Yeah. It looks great. Yeah, just the right amount. And so, Martha, do you like to add the water through the feed tube, or do you like to add it all at once? Oh no, little by little. Little by little. Okay, so here's a quarter of a cup. We can start with that. So that's four no, tablespoons. Make sure there is no ice in your ice water. Right. Because one little piece of ice can just sort of ruin the texture. It'll make a hole in your dough. 
to slowly add it, and if we need some more, we can add it tablespoon by tablespoon. So I'll just add a little bit more here. here. And then I need a little bit more. Okay. And I have a tablespoon there for you. Okay. And it's really not hard to make your own pie dough. I think so many people are um, afraid to do that, but it's really simple. I mean, we're making it here in, what, two so, minutes? Yeah. Well, it, sh it should take about a minute. Yeah. But we're talking. Yeah. <laughs> when you're concentrating, it's about a minute. It's so great. There, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Done. And then um, mm. we're going to split it between two pieces of plastic wrap. And you want to make sure that you form it into a disc. Okay. So many recipes call for you to um, form it into a ball, but it's so hard to roll a ball after it's been chilled. I agree. Yes. I totally agree. So there's one. That's one. Do you think this looks wet enough? Yeah, and um, what I like to do, if it's, if it's still a little crumbly, is you can compress the dough with a plastic wrap and just gently push in. Yes. And if it holds together, it's perfect, just like that. It's holding together. This will make the flakiest, most delicious buttery crust for that delicious combination of pecans and and uh, sort of like a, it has a crunchy topping too. Yeah, the crunchy topping. And this is, you only need one of these discs for this tart here, oh. so you can save the other okay. for um, another pie. Okay. But of course, you're probably making more than one pie for Thanksgiving, oh, right? you know me. I have to make lots, like yes. lots. Even though we're, we're having a smallish group, like I think it's 15 or so. Oh. Yeah, so not too many. So not just like many. that, press it into a nice round. Somebody, I, I was on the turkey hotline. I, Are you going on? I, maybe, tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. That would be so fun because uh, all your knowledge, the whole gang of you should be on. Yes. Because, We'd love to. Yeah. And it's um, so much fun. People are asking some lady, oh, bigger or smaller, it doesn't matter. Same <laughs> amount. And then put that in the fridge and chill. Yes, for right. at least an hour. At least okay. an hour. And Martha, if you want to roll this out, this, okay. is, we have, this is one um, disc of dough here, and we're going to fit it into the 11 inch tar pan. Okay. And after you do that, we're going to fold the crust over because I like to reinforce the edge. I agree. Um, so many times people will cut their tarts and the crust, the edge will shatter. And so this will help um, prevent that. And so I'm going to um, dock this one. It's been chilled for about 30 minutes. So yeah, explain what docking is. People docking don't know is what just you're talking about. Piercing, um, piercing the dough with um, the tines of a fork. Um, and what it does is it helps the dough from, um, from puffing up in the oven. Yes, notice how I rolled this pastry on the pin. This enables you to unroll it very nicely right into your shell. And then I'm going to top this with parchment. And I like to crinkle up the parchment a little bit because it helps to get in all those nooks and crannies so it that does. you don't have any space that isn't covered in beans. And I'm going to use lentils here. Um, I like to use lentils because they're smaller and they fit in every little fluted edge. Oh, so I'm just yeah. going to pour really this good. in. And then I just fold down. I just draw some of that pastry down the right. excess. And do you roll yours off the top? Yes, you can. Yeah. Any excess, you can, you can just trim off with a rolling pin or your hand. So this goes into the oven at 375 for about 30 minutes with weights, and then right. you remove the weights for about 10 until it's nice and golden brown. And that's what I have here, this guy right mm. here. And um, one last thing that I like to do to prevent um, the crust from getting soggy with the filling, if you brush it with a little bit of egg white and let the egg white dry on the bottom of the crust, it will create a seal, and so it won't get saturated with your oh, filling. That's a good idea. Yeah, so many people have egg problems white. with that. With the, you know, especially with pumpkin pie, having a bottom crust that isn't crisp. Right. Okay. Okay. And then so we'll, look, we have all these crusts. So many pie. Well, we have yes. fifteen guests for Thanksgiving, right? Uh huh. Okay. All right. We can just freeze one of these. Yeah. Then I don't have to do it on Wednesday night. Okay. There. Okay. So I'm going to roll off the top. And so bake it at what temperature? 375. Okay, after you chill it. In the lower third of the oven, too. I like okay. to do it in the lower third. See how easy it is? You just use your rolling pin to roll it and take off the excess. Comes right really off. easy. And make some, make some, see how easy? You just go like this, you know, like that. You could use your thumbs, but um, if your thumbs are as sore as mine are from all the weeding and preparing the garden for the winter as mine are, it's, so you can do it with your thumb like this, too. But the rolling pin is so fast. So that, what a beautiful crust. Yes. Lovely. Okay. So we're going to start with the filling here. Okay. So one can of pumpkin. One 15, 15 ounce ounces. can of pumpkin. And my favorite. And your favorite, sweetened condensed <gasps> milk. Now, if you wanted, if you had pumpkin and you had it roasted and you wanted to use it in the filling, um, my recommendation would be that you would hang it in cheesecloth overnight so that any excess water comes out. Otherwise, oh, you'll have, yes. be left with a soupy mess here. Yes. Now, 
Now, if you um, are like I am, you never open one of these cans because you eat it with a spoon. It's so good. Condensed milk. Do you know what I'm talking about? Anybody know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. Yes. It's, <laughs> it gets nice and thick when it's icy cold. Oh. I love so, it. You so these are, the, these are the two cans that I will be opening for Thanksgiving. Yes. Period. <laughs> only. That's it. Yep. Oh, okay. These are the only two cans. I just, I just don't buy canned food so much. Um, and then we're going to put in a hefty pinch of salt because yes. it's really going to bring out that flavor, the pumpkin flavor. Okay. Um, I have a teaspoon of cinnamon, and you can yes. use pumpkin pie spice if you like or a mixture of warm spices. Ginger would be great in here. Um, Wait, even fresh grated ginger. Fresh, that would be, that would be mm. really nice. Um, or but here I am fooling around with your mother's recipe. Do not use fresh ginger. <laughs> use her, his mother's recipe, okay? And then two, forgive me. two your, large what's, eggs. What's your mom's name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth, forgive me. I do not mean to do that. <laughs> and then two, um, two large eggs, and that's okay. it. It's really only a few ingredients for the filling. Yes. Um, and then we're going we're gonna to pour that into our tart shell here. And I put it over um, a baking sheet, a rack with a baking sheet, just in case anything spills over. Okay. Um, you don't want to mess in your oven. Okay. There. All right. I can do that. Okay. And what do you have to do? Well, we're gonna, and then we're gonna make the crumb topping here. Okay. Um, so start. it's three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. I'm gonna add three tablespoons of flour to that. Another pinch of um, hefty pinch of salt, and another teaspoon of cinnamon. Mm. And then I'm just gonna mix this guy up. A little bit. Using the, my favorite pastry cutter. The pastry cutter, yeah. What it does is it helps to um, keep all the butter, I and mean, we're going to add some butter to this once I have this mixed now, up. Now, you can't use a food processor because you want to keep your pecans whole, right? Right. Okay. Well, halves. They're, they're halves. cut in half. Okay. So this is going to go into the oven, Martha. Okay. Do you want me to, here, we'll do it. Can... Oops. Right there. There. Okay. For how long? And this bakes at 425 for 15 minutes. And I'm going to pull out the one that we have in here that's going. And we just want the top to set. Oh, so pretty. Okay. Mm. Now, I'm putting the butter in here. Yes. And did you put the salt already? I already did, yes. Okay. And then just cut this in? Cut that in with a pastry cutter until okay. it's well blended in. And then we add the pecan halves. Okay. And if you have some, um, if you have some small pecans, I like to leave them whole. It's pretty to have the variation. Mm -hmm. And you can make this up to a week in advance. So this is something you could do ahead. Um, and I have it here. It's chilled. And I'm just going to top this right here on top of the pie. And you can see that after 15 minutes, the top sets so that the crumb topping doesn't Guess fall down to the bottom. Guess what I'm doing this one. Are you taking this home? I am. Okay, good. That's good. <laughs> I decided to change my dessert menu. I just got and the I thumbs even, up. And I haven't even tasted this, but it's so pretty. It it's is. It's so nice. It's a different, it's a, it's a combination of two, the pumpkin and the pecan pie. Yes. And the okay. crumb topping just so gets crisp in the oven. It's really, really pretty. And you get the idea here. This all goes on mm. and it melts over the, the top in the oven. And then I'm going to cut you a slice here, Martha. <gasps> I can't wait to taste. Where is my little cloth? You can hear the crunch on top. Yes, that's what I like. Okay, I'm going to cut a little piece. So this is fantastic. And whipped cream? Just slightly sweetened whipped cream, yes. Okay. Just... And did you put enough on here? I don't no, think I didn't. So. You, all of it. Yes, I think so. Yeah, don't leave any. Okay. Cover that whole top because you want that crunch everywhere, right? It's like creme brulee. You it know? is. It's sort of like a, a pecan brulee pumpkin tart. Just a little dollop of sweetened whipped cream. Mm. And that is fantastic. 